Well, what's going on, YouTube and Gideon's Tactical Crew? Thanks for joining me on another Blade review. And we got a cool series of tools to talk about today that are budget friendly and outdoor, we could argue utility focused pocket knives from SOG with their SOG TELUS series. Now, I just recently did the fixed blade video. There's a link in the description if you want to watch that. I will run this in momentarily as well. Some really good competitive options that kind of fall into that outdoor budget arena that we can talk about momentarily. Um, and, and I've heard you guys recently commenting like, dude, I don't have $200 to drop on a pocket knife. Like what is new to the market that can come in, you know, like between say 40 and 60 bucks, uh, you know, that is available and is it worth purchasing? And so that's what these come in at. Uh, the larger one can be scored between like 50 and 60 bucks. The smaller one here can be scored for about 40. So falling into that category, depending on, you know, what they do for us might be really good value. And these are definitely like designed to run in tandem, support your outdoor adventures to go with you on a fishing trip, a hunting trip camping with your family, a day hike, or a backpacking excursion. That's what these are designed to do. They're kind of heavy, they're big, they're bulky, they're broad. These are not designed to, you know, go to the office in a pair of slacks or a night out on town with your significant other. They're, they're, you know, they're not this. This is light, slim, fast in the hand, sleek, hot. This is much more broad, big, kind of clunky, bulldozer-esque to be used in those type of environments. Um, and this one being like, 5.7 ounces, the smaller one being like four and a half ounces. So just kind of take that in consideration when you're considering that. Um, and I will have links for you guys throughout this video over to the affiliate networks that I regularly partner with. So if this you know series makes sense for you, always appreciate it or just you know gear purchases in general. Now, the first thing we got to address is this right here. This series is made in China and has says Cryo 440. Now, when I hear 440, I immediately think 440A which is not impressive. Doesn't make me get up in the morning and get excited to use the tool. So uh, the weird thing is though, when I bought, and that's what the old, if you will, quote unquote, first series with the fixed blade and the manual larger folder say on it. But then if you go to what came out in the spring and I bought those back in November of 2022, uh, I bought this guy a little bit later, it came out second, which is Cryo 440C. Now 440C is much better um, and so I actually tagged SOG in a post, asked them, finally got some information and found out that it was basically a typo as they were transitioning from GSM Outdoors to like owning SOG, which is a whole different conversation. Um, and it just wasn't communicated and wasn't put on right. All, the entire TELUS series is 440C, Rockwell 58 to 60, which is a good Rockwell for 440C. 440C is very stainless, rust resistant, which is great if you need that. And because of that 58 to 60 and just kind of the cryo treatment, that they did, it's going to, in many ways, have better edge retention than your definitely your like eight CRs and OS eight. Take a little bit longer to get a good edge on it. Fine edge will take a little bit more effort, but the good thing is that the relief edges on this entire series are excellent. This one actually bit me twice. It is razor razor sharp. The entire series was really ground in well. And as we are discovering whether or not this is the right tool to take on our adventures, I can tell you that there is one device that absolutely goes with me and I, that I trust on all of my adventures when I go into the backcountry and is today's sponsor is my Zolio satellite communication device. This thing is awesome. I've been rocking it now for two years and I'm super glad that they are a regular sponsor here at the channel because they offer peace of mind to myself, my loved ones, my wife. I'm able to communicate when I'm in uh, environments without cell coverage. She knows that if I get injured and I'm by myself or I'm even with a group and we can't call out, we can easily hit that SOS button and it's going to hit uh, and be able to communicate and be able to message back and forth first responders let them know what's going on what the situation is when they come in for whatever scenario it may be and since it's on the iridium network of satellites you know not only is your text messages going to go through and get to where they need to be but also that sos in an emergency so this is an amazing device guys i use it regularly take it with me uh have you let other people bor borrow it because it's great you can untether it and someone else can use it without having to build out a whole account and do all these other things. Uh, and so that is awesome. And there are great 
um, different levels of subscription. So it's a very high value piece of equipment that gives you extra peace of mind. So I will have links in the description below this video, as well as my exclusive promo code, which will waive the $40 activation fee. So I encourage you to go over there, check out all that Zillio has to offer, because I'm just scratching the surface of its capabilities, and check out what it has to give you just that extra peace of mind the next time you head outdoors. Now the ATK down here is the assisted smaller version at 3.2 inches of blade length. And then the larger FLK is going to be 3.6 inches of blade length. Uh, and this will have a stonewash finish. These tend to have coated and I think they might have uncoated kind of like a smoke, which is really cool looking. And they both are gonna have the exact same blade shape, like the profile, the thickness is the same at 0.14. So just over an eighth of an inch thick, not quite five thirty seconds. So it's a robust, high flat ground blade with excellent swedging, tough, thick tip there. Now, because of the massive belly, it is a wicked slicer. The slicing capability is there. Piercing, eh, not so much. It's definitely, I wouldn't say like a tactical folder, you know, deployment folder wouldn't say it would be good for that. Um, though the, you know, the tip is enough that you could pierce a package if you had to, that type of thing. But it's definitely in the sweeping belly where the focus is and carving, whittling, you know, doing those type of things, making a feather stick if you had to for a fire. The blade shape is excellent for that. If you need to just do heavy utility, the tip is enough strength behind it that you can do some more prying than say like a paper thin tip. I mean, don't be an idiot, it's not a screwdriver, but you know, you have a lot more robustness there behind it and then great food prep knives. If you like having maybe a bigger, bulkier blade that's not ideal for food prep as your fixed blade, the, these would be excellent to do a lot of food prep around a campsite. So that aspect, I was really pleased with not only the steel that was chosen after we got clarification, that typo, um, and the performance in the idea of these being outdoor and utility focused blades. So I was really happy with that aspect. Now lockup and deployment is different for both of these models, even they look similar. Now they're both gonna have ambidextrous thumb studs and a kind of shallow flipper that's kind of square. I, it's easy to engage. So if you have like leather gloves on or work gloves on, this is an easy tool to engage, which is really good. I like that, you know, cold weather gloves. This is easy to deploy, not only with the flippers, but then also with the thumb studs, which are pronounced, they're ambidextrous, easy to engage left or right-handed. Here it is like left-handed for me. Easily done, no problem there. Uh, now what's really weird is that the FLK has polymer thumb studs that match the color of the backspacer. It's not a deal breaker by any means, it's just kind of odd. And it definitely has like a polymer feel to them. But the A, always, okay, the ATK, the smaller one is looks to me to be steel. Those, those are not polymer. So it's kind of odd. Uh, some people may hate it, doesn't bother me. It fully functions and they haven't you know, loosened up or caused any sort of problem there. Now, the larger version is a manual that runs on some form of ball bearings. I can see a few bearings in there. Uh, good pivot size. It would have been nice to just have bronze washers. That would have cut down on cost and given it a little bit extra durability. It's not the end of the world, but that's just something that I always look for in outdoor folders is like, I prefer that. Decent size stop bar, engages, right there with us like a sub lock it's not a frame lock per se and it's not a liner lock per se it's 50 percent there it's got the polymer scale that's like embedded i've seen kershaw do this kind of sometimes it's interesting different uh gives you fullness that frame locks don't always necessarily give you and it is got some slight play side to side which is what you normally get with ball bearings but very solid up and down. Very, 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 very solid. Feels very secure. I never felt like the frame lock, sub lock, whatever we want to call it, was like shifting or anything like that. And then good centering straight down the middle and whips open. So uh, that's the manual version. The smaller, cheaper ATK is assisted. Doesn't need to be. Wish that it wasn't. You know, it's not the end of the world. Some people like assisted. I I've just grown to just not care um, for it. So if I have a choice, but it's snappy, like you know from SOG, definitely does what it's supposed to. Again, those flipper, you know, ambidextrous, however, which way you want to do it. The difference being that this one is a liner lock that hits about 50% of the blade there. Again, doesn't seem to shift or anything. You do get that slight wobble side to side, 
but very rock solid up and down. Both of these were very solid for the up down mo movement, which is what I look for in an outdoor folder. Uh, so that's that model. Now, as we move to the handles, they are polymer handles. This is like an ink color is what they call it. It's like the darkest blue with maybe some hints of black. This one has the yellow backspacer. They have lots of different color combinations to choose from. Now it fills out my large size hand easily. No problems there. Something you may notice is that it doesn't have any hardware aside from the pivot and this Allen headed lanyard hole. So you actually back that off, back that off, and then the screws are actually inside and embedded. So there's a way I think that you can do that. On this model, being four and a half ounces for a two, three point two inch blade, eh, it's a little, again, heavy. This one is not milled. They did not mill this one at all. There's no milling anywhere except for like a little bit right there by the, the liner lock. Ergonomic in the sense of the polymer. Fills out the hand, a little bit of jimping, but it's all square everywhere. So it's not hot. doesn't create a hot spot with the jimp aspect. And medium texture. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. And in the sense of the handle design, ergonomic, totally gets the job done. The larger version, again, with that sub lock, same idea, blocky, jimping everywhere. This one has been milled, as you can see there. Lots of milling all the way around both sides. I don't know why they didn't do that with this version. Would have lightened it up a little bit. So strength in there, again, again, same idea. Like you can see the screws for the scales are like embedded on the inside, not the exterior. So that's different. You know, they did the same with the fixed blade. So kind of unique there. Uh, and since I have it out, I'll just show you really fast the sizing. And again, you can check out the full review on that. The fixed blade will be slightly larger. There's a lot of good aspects for this. this is like a stainless steel 440C camp knife between 50 and 60 bucks. Um, there are some aspects that, you know, just go watch the video that you would need to know before you pick it up involving the handle, P pros and cons. So up until this point, guys, I, the, the handles, again... You know, they're cheap, they're, they, they feel cheap, they're synthetic polymers, um, but again, they're cheap. You know, the, the pricing is there, 40 bucks, 50 to 55, I think, 60 maybe, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, um, for the folder. You know, so maybe maybe 50, I think, for the for the manual larger one. Here is really the, the kicker that is kind of sad, is the pocket clip. Man, oh man, if this was differently designed, these, these would have been like very good competitors to a competitive option that we have, which is the Gerber Gator. Now the Gerber Gator made in America, about 55 to 60 bucks still for the 420 HC version. Uh, amazing outdoor folder, full handle grip, great blade shape. Uh, but you're gonna have to put like a thumb stud. I have a quick thumb stud on there you know, to like actually get a one-headed action and the nylon sheet that it comes with is kind of bogus. So I, you know, invested like an extra 30 bucks into a bench craft. You can pick these up, links below. Um, leather sheet that works a lot better and kind of like fits the vibe of that. I was hoping that these SOGs would basically be like way more easily to deploy, about the same price point, arguably even better performing steel, you know, but it really is going to come down to these pocket clips, which are ambidextrous, but they are too low meaning that the, there's a very high pinch point, great for gloves, again, outdoor idea, but it's raised so high, so, so high, guys. I mean, look at how it compares to like a buck. This is the buck. You can see it's much lower and backed off so that the hotspot, what ends up happening is that the hotspot is right in the middle of your palm. And it is not comfortable to do hard push down cuts for more than a minute or two. Now, if you have gloves on, it's a little more bearable, but if you're gonna make fuzz sticks, feather sticks to get a fire going, I don't like it because, I mean, I wanted to, and the blade and the ergonomics work, the handle pocket, or excuse me, the pocket clip creates just such a hot spot on both of these in those type of woodscraft tasks that it's kind of unbearable. Quick cuts, no problem. General utility, not an issue. Doing some food prep, you know, doing like a little pinch cut and like, you know, doing, you know, a, a meal and cutting some cordage, you know, no problem. But if you're gonna bear down on these tools and actually do some harder work for an extended period of time, the pocket clips are just way too high and too low. If they'd been backed up to here, it would have only been like on your back pinky and you probably wouldn't even felt it or it would have been doable. As it is, it is not doable for extended cutting. Now that doesn't mean that they're total garbage and trash, but it really limits what these could have been. These could have been better, like, featured versions of, like, a knife like this Joker Crocker. 
you know, very ergonomic, full handle, full flat grind. This one has a 90, there's no 90s on this. You know, I mean, this would be an excellent camp tool to have as like a pocket knife, right? But the, and the handle is designed to help that, but those pocket clips, so you could take the pocket clips off and just throw them in a pouch, buy one of these pouches. Let's just see if this larger one will fit in there. The larger one would totally fit in that bench craft. Look at that. So, I mean, that's an option. Or if you, again, if you're just wearing it maybe at, at, at the work site, you know, and you're just doing general stuff, no problem. But man, ugh, if that was just better designed and higher ride, it would have really helped out a lot. Um, so that is, again, just giving you perspective with that Gerber. There you go. Very similar in size. Almost identical, actually, in handle length, blade length to the large. Um, the FLK. So guys, that's me. That's my experience with the Telus series. Let me know what you think, if particularly if you own one. How has it been performing for you? How has it been holding up? Always appreciate those comments. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming over today and watching this video. And hopefully it's helped you better determine if the Telus City, the te I'm talking too fast. The Telus series is worth throwing into your rotation or not. Um, and just appreciate your guys' time. And I hope that you have an excellent week. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.